Konnichiwa, this is the Shogunstein and Little Shogunstein, and in the background you might hear some thunder because the monsoon is coming here to the Phoenix area. And this is a look at a uh, Kickstarter game that delivered to us on Friday called Eternal Palace from Alley Cat Games. It was a relatively smooth Kickstarter campaign, no issues, came relatively on time, so I was very happy with the KS uh, campaign. There was no drama and a uh, very smooth KS campaign. But probably, other than local um, produced games, probably one of the last Kickstarter projects that I will be backing. I still have some uh, outstanding Kickstarters from some local companies here in Arizona that I like to support. But other than that, with the uh, rising cost of, of gas, the uh, supply chain issues, shipping issues, and issues on some of these KS campaigns. Um, not really into the Kickstarter anymore. If I really need uh, a Kickstarter game right when it comes out, I think I'll wait for a retail pledge. And again, to be honest, as I've mentioned in a number of other videos, almost all the games that I've wanted on Kickstarter that I didn't back end up being available at the secondhand market. We have a very healthy uh, seller's market, used market for games in the Phoenix area, usually within a couple months. So again, um, this was one that I did back, and I do have some other Kickstarter projects out there. And again, the few that I have, the majority of our uh, local games here in the Phoenix area that I like to support. Now, I backed the Eternal Palace. Again, one of the last KS games going to be backing for a number of reasons. Uh, one, I do enjoy the uh, designer. Um, he did a game that I really enjoyed called uh, Tricky Tides, which has some wonderful arts, a great trick-taking game with a very kind of nautical, um, almost like a Moby Dick kind of theme. And I really like that game, so I do like the designer. Um, also saw a, a good uh, preview video for this game from uh, Board Games in a Minute. They uh, did a nice job uh, on that video, which uh, piqued my interest in this game. And also, uh, I do enjoy games that have an East Asian theme as you know I in my side gig my side hustle um, I do a lot of education on that part of the world I've, I've traveled that part of the world quite a bit so I do enjoy games that have this kind of theme so when I backed it I initially thought that the the theme of this game was uh, ancient China but nowhere in the box or in the instructions does it mention that it's supposed to be um, China and even on uh, something called BGG, um, I wasn't able to find someone even had actually asked the question in one of the forums about you know, what's the historical context of the game, and uh, they were kind of uh, elusive about it. So judging from the, the art, I, I think this is supposed to be in, in ancient China, but it doesn't explicitly say. And if you look at the, the cards, one thing you'll notice is that the... Uh, the people in the, the art, people in the picture of the cards, none of them, especially the males, none of the males have that, that cue. That cue would let you know that it took place during the, the Qing dynasty. That's one way you can tell the time period. If you see that sort of uh, almost like a ponytail, they call it cue. That was something that the Manchurians who ran the Qing dynasty would make the uh, Chinese males uh, wear as a sign of subservience. So that when you see that in a movie, or in a game that at least gives you an idea that the game or the movie takes place during the Qing Dynasty, which rules for a long time. None of these characters have the uh, the tail, the Q, so at least I know that it doesn't, if it is supposed to be China, it's going to be earlier China and not the uh, Qing Dynasties after the 1500s. And they're going to rule until about 1911 when Sun Yat-sen takes over tries to establish a democracy. Now, some of you may know Mrs. Shogunstein is Chinese, and I asked her to take a look at the art on the, the cards. Again, Mrs. Shogunstein is, uh, is uh, Malaysian Chinese, and when she looked at the, the cards, she felt that uh, some of the cards, uh, the people looked Chinese and some didn't. And she uh, pointed to the, uh, the mouths on the the characters on the cards, and she said that the, the way, in her opinion, the way the mouths were drawn did not lead her to believe that they were uh, 
supposed to be Chinese. So again, I don't know if it's supposed to be the theme on this is just supposed to be, you know, some sort of generic East Asian theme, or if it is supposed to be uh, particular to a Chinese dynasty, there is no uh, time period in the rule book or it mentioned in, on the box. I couldn't, I looked up Eternal Palace and I really couldn't find anything on that. So again, if you look at the um, art on the, the board and the card, um, it looks like it's Chinese art, but it doesn't explicitly say it. So again, I don't know if this is, maybe it's an imaginary uh, land that, uh, you know, they mentioned an emperor that you're, you're doing things here to please the, the emperor and restore his monuments. But it doesn't specifically say anywhere that I could see China or Japan. So again, it looks kind of uh, generic East Asian. But uh, maybe the uh, people from Alley Cat Games or the designers can uh, speak to that a little more. So you have a, a bunch of cards here. These are the advisors. You have a uh, board that's not necessarily a big board, but you can see it's a top-down board as opposed to you know most boards that go the other way. So you see, again, it's, it's top-down. So again, it's not a big board, but it's taken up space uh, this way. The box, um, again, this is the deluxe Kickstarter version. So it did come with some extra things and some typical um, KS bling, which again, uh, people do seem to, to like. But as we mentioned earlier, why Kickstarter games are becoming so, so expensive. A lot of times it is this Kickstarter bling. And in many cases, again, I haven't gone through all the expansions here. A lot of times that bling ends up being kind of excessive. One of the big things that made the difference here to, from the deluxe and the regular version were these um, monuments. So again, um, in terms of the, the art, it does kind of look like, you know, based on China, even though it doesn't explicitly say that. So you got kind of like the, the pagoda. Here you have like a Suzhou. I remember when I went to Suzhou, which is sort of the Venice of, of China. Yeah, I remember seeing these kinds of bridges. So in, in the standard level game, for the monuments, you're going to get these tiles. In the deluxe version, you're getting um, these sort of look like, you know, uh, sort of like the, the printed... Um, minis, you know, like those those fancy printers that, that make these things. So this is one of the big differences. Now, whether you get the, the regular or the deluxe version, you do get a solo mode, which uh, I'm going to be uh, fooling around with shortly, give it a try. But some of the things that I've read were that the solo mode uh, is good on this. So well, this is the solo mode. Everyone gets that. Some of the other expansions that are in here are exclusive to the, the Kickstarter. So here again, we have the Compositions expansion. This is the uh, Privileges expansion. And also um, the River Market expansions. And as you have this sort of dice placement, which is another reason I got it. I do like dice placement games. Uh, Raja Jagat of the Ganges uh, is one of my favorite games, and that's uh, Dice Placement. Uh, we like Dice Forge. We're into dice placement games. One of the things that also came with the Kickstarter are these extra locations which change the, the reward. So actually you get some more replayability. A lot of times you get, you know, a dice placement, worker placement game. You go to a spot and you always get the same uh, reward. Here at least um, you have the ability to um, change it up a bit. So again, that came with the, the Kickstarter. And then there's also a uh, Labyrinth expansion right here. I don't know where David Bowie is or Jennifer Connelly. I think she's on a boat with uh, Tom Cruise. But uh, the Labyrinth uh, expansion. Now, another aspect of this game is, is doing the, the painting. And this is some of the thing, uh, one of the things that I've seen a lot of uh, people talking about about the game uh, online is they have these easels for your painting to display. And apparently the issue is the uh, easels, if you assemble them, don't fit in the box. And in the box has, there's a lot of stuff in here. You got all your resources. You got nice wooden resources and player tokens and, you know, uh, all kinds of things that we punched out and resources. There's a lot of things in here, plus the cards. Plus, again, you got to have a whole bunch of dice. I'm over here now. You put yourself out there. So, again, dice placement. You got to have a lot of dice. So, one of the issues that came up was 
that uh, people say if you assemble these, um, it's very difficult to get everything back in the, the box. Also, I'm kind of having a little bit of a tricky time trying to figure out how to organize all of these paintings. Again, part of the game is that you're assembling uh, these paintings, and if you get, you know, eight layers of the paintings, that's what triggers the end game. You want to get eight layers of the, the paintings. So you have all these these paintings, and it came with this, uh, again, uh, sort of insert, 3D printed insert to, to store all the, the paintings. That's the part I'm having a little trouble trying to, to figure out. So there's a lot of stuff in the, the box here. So again, um, why did we back it? Uh, I do enjoy one of the, uh, the designers of the games, a big fan of Tricky Tides. And again, I do like, uh, I'm very interested in the history and the culture in East Asia. So I do like the, the games that have that kind of theme. And uh, there's a lot here. There's a lot in the, in the box. So again, one of the things with Kickstarter, excuse me, one of the things with uh, Kickstarter is you get so much stuff, sometimes a little overwhelming, and sometimes it's hard to get the, the game to the table right away as you sort through the stuff. So again, I don't know how many of these expansions we need right away versus um, play the base game and then uh, add these to it. So again, with the deluxe, we got these uh, nice 3D printed uh, monuments. We got a few extra expansions. Everyone gets that solo mode. So this is a look at what's in the box for Eternal Palace. This, again, was a Kickstarter game that we backed, Alley Cat Games. It is one to five players. They're showing ages 14 plus, 60 to 90 minutes. There's the box. Art on the box is really nice and again there is dice placement this sort of painting aspect of it and uh, a lot of expansion so we're looking forward to playing this uh, as again as as we're in phoenix here and the temperature is is really hot and we also have the monsoon season it's a good time to be inside and play some games so we're going to try this uh two players we're going to try it solo then i'll try to bring it to a game night and get it at a bigger player count and again, uh, very smooth Kickstarter campaign. So I do want to thank Alley Cat Games for running what was, I thought, a uh, very up and outstanding, very uh, transparent um, Kickstarter campaign. I can't say the same for uh, a couple other uh, Kickstarters that I've had um, in the past. And I got one outstanding that uh, there's still some... Uh, it's a lot of issues with. So it was very refreshing to have Alley Cat Games have a very smooth Kickstarter campaign. And again, just as, uh, you know, things with inflation, gas prices, supply chain, uh, I just don't know if Kickstarter moving forward is something that I want to keep doing. I have a, uh, a car very similar to the car that uh, Beavis and Butthead uh, were in the car chase in their, their new movie uh it uh you know i have a small kia and uh even my small kia is costing me over 50 dollars uh a fill-up and i'm in a ta state with with low taxes i can imagine people that are in uh my former home in new york or california what it must cost you to fill up your your gas tank so at you know 50 dollars a pop for for gas at least i don't know how many kickstarter games i'm gonna be backing so again uh I'm gonna look for you know used games or if I really, really need to, I have to have that game, uh, maybe find it secondhand. So this is probably going to be one of the last Kickstarters that you're going to see us show, other than the couple that I have that are local here, where I know the people personally. Anyway, let's look at Eternal Palace and what was in the box. We'll get back to you after we uh, play it and let you know what we we think. But uh, again, the, you know, the art is is really, really nice the components everything has been very good quality components the colors it seems so far that they chose some good colors as you guys know the shogun's team is colorblind so there are some issues with color that we have card quality is is good and again mrs shogunstein who is uh again who is chinese uh had some issues with you know not that the art didn't look nice but she wasn't uh completely sold at all the People in the cards look Chinese, and again, she pointed out the uh, the mouths. And again, that's from from her point of view. So again, Turtle Palace, 
Kickstarter, Shogunstein out.